Hi, we've been using fungally dominated compost in our garden for years, and we've done so without ever purchasing any compost or mulch products. Today I'll show you how, but first let's talk about some of the differences between bacterially dominated compost and fungally dominated compost. Here we have a hot compost pile made from leaves, garden waste, and used coffee grounds that has been cooking along at about 140 degrees Fahrenheit for the last few weeks. Hot compost like this typically has about 25 to 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. And though fungi play a part in the decomposition process, bacteria play a more dominant role thanks to high nitrogen ingredients like used coffee grounds. You can make fungally dominated compost on the other hand simply by increasing the carbon to nitrogen ratio. As a general rule, the higher the carbon to nitrogen ratio is, and the more coarse the material is, the more dominant of a role fungi will play in the decomposition of the pile, and the longer it will take. For example, here's what I call our slow or lazy compost pile, which has been the source of most of our fungally dominated compost over the years. I add mostly brown, but some green ingredients to the pile without even considering the carbon to nitrogen ratio. I also add large amounts of woody material, including chopped up tree branches, twigs, and leaves. This lazy approach combined with the inclusion of woody material almost always results in a carbon to nitrogen ratio well above 30 to 1. The lower level of nitrogen doesn't support as much bacterial activity, so the pile doesn't heat up as much and decomposes more slowly. Fungi, however, prefer the lower temperatures. They also have enzymes to break down the leaves and twigs and prefer them as a food source. As a result, fungi flourish and we end up with fungally dominated compost in about six months to a year, with some sifting required. If I didn't mind waiting longer, I could make fungally dominated compost using no high nitrogen inputs. For example, I could build a large pile of these leaves, which have a carbon to nitrogen ratio of roughly 50 to 1, and in a couple of years I'd have leaf mold which is an excellent fungally dominated soil amendment. I can do the same thing with wood chips, which have an even higher carbon to nitrogen ratio and take even longer to break down over three years in our climate. Adding fungally dominated compost to the garden will increase the number and diversity of fungi in the soil. These fungi will help break down organic matter and make nutrients available to plants. The compost will also support the growth of mycorrhizal fungi, which supply plant roots with nutrients and water. While this is true of all high quality compost, some claim that fungally dominated compost better supports mycorrhizal fungi than bacterially dominated compost. However, more research is needed to confirm this. Now let's get back to the topic of the time and effort involved in making fungally dominated compost. Some of you may be thinking that you'd rather purchase a product than to go to all that trouble. Well, I have good news for you. Fungally dominated compost is not necessary in your garden. In fact, there are free alternatives that better support mycorrhizae, specifically high carbon mulches like leaves and wood chips. Coarse wood chips in particular provide an excellent habitat and food source for mycorrhizae. In Dr. Linda Chucker Scott's article, Mycorrhizae, So What the Heck Are They Anyway? She offers some practical advice on cultivating mycorrhizae, which includes the following. Coarse organic mulch is a good reservoir for mycorrhizal spores and litter type affects mycorrhizal diversity. Try to use a mixed mulching material, such as arborist wood chips, which will help reduce nutrient runoff and leakage. And as I mentioned, leaves make an excellent fungally dominated mulch. According to teaming with microbes, fungi can extend up into the leaf litter on the surface of the soil, decay leaves, and then bring the nutrients back down into the root zone. A huge advantage over bacteria the other primary nutrient recycler in the soil food web. In addition, mulch supports other beneficial soil organisms like earthworms, which will consume the decaying material and deposit nutrient-rich castings in their wake. So I hope this video has given you food for thought on how you can increase fungal diversity in your soil and support mycorrhizae without purchasing any products. To hear Stephen Legary address some of the product claims of fungally dominated compost, please follow this link or the one in the description below. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.